The following is an overview of the pre-assembly of the Shoremaster kit dock. These steps can be done on site. Always refer to the print sheet that comes with your kit dock. The pre-drilled holes along the kit dock frame allow it to be laid out in numerous configurations. Your kit dock and its components will be specific to your individual dock and your print sheet is the first step in the assembly and construction process. We will show the assembly of a 4 by 16 foot and a 4 by 12 foot dock frame that will make a 4 foot by 28 foot finger section. Match the tag numbers on the print to the tag numbers on the dock frames. Align the sections together according to the print and use a center punch to help align the pre-drilled holes of each dock frame. C-clamps can also be used effectively to align the bolt holes. Bolt the sections together using the half inch by one and a half inch bolts. Make certain that the dock sections are flush with each other. Your print sheet will show the proper locations of the floats. Do not slide the floats on their sides as this will cause scuffing and possible damage. When necessary, slide the floats at an angle as shown. Arrange the floats into position and prepare to take measurements for attaching the floats to the frame. Align the floats to fit flush at each end and on the sides of the frame. This will help to determine the future measurements that will be used as reference points for the float attachment. This measurement is 4 feet 5 inches, which is specific to this particular print. Take the measurement from the end of the float and mark the frame to show where the float will attach to it. Always refer to your kit dock print. Slide the next float into position and align the end of the float with the marks that were made at measurement. Do a final walk around prior to drilling to ensure the proper placement of the floats. Make sure the floats are flush on both ends and the sides. Now. Use a quarter inch Allen wrench to install the float plugs. It's important to make sure that all the plugs are installed on each float. On any float smaller than four feet by eight feet, four three eighths by two and a half inch thread cutter bolts and four two inch washers will be used to attach it to the frame. On a four foot by eight foot float, six three-eighths inch by two and a half inch thread cutter bolts and six two inch washers will be used. Lay the bolts out on the floats for convenience and have extra drill bits handy in the event of breakage. Pre-drill the proper amount of holes using an 11 30 seconds drill bit. Make sure to drill straight and to drill in the center of the slots on the floats. With two people working in unison, the float attachment process can go fairly quickly if one person pre-drills the holes, followed by the second person inserting and tightening the bolts. If the float surface or the top of the float does not touch the bottom of the dock frame, the bolt can be angled to compensate for space as shown. Be certain to attach all of the bolts. Now, go back to the print and verify the location of the columns. Check the length and measure and mark on the dock frame where the columns will go. These are shown as a black square on the print for this particular job. We'll then lay out the rub rail measurements leaving room for the columns. A jig can be supplied that will help assemblers measure and mark the columns, underwater braces and some other components. Here we'll be hand measuring. The columns are two and a half inches wide. When cutting the rub rail, We'll leave a three inch space for the columns which gives a half inch gap so there will be no difficulty in getting the columns to fit on site later. Measure one and a half inches from the center of the column bolt hole and mark. The rub rail will then be cut to fit in between these markings. Do this around the entire dock. Mark the end boards with an EB. 
The inboard rub rail will be cut 3 inches longer than the width of the kit dock frame. Each end of the rub rail inboard will then extend 1.5 inches beyond the width of the frame. This particular dock frame's width is 4 feet, so the end board rub rail will be 4 feet 3 inches long. Refer to your kit dock print to find where the finger attaches to the main walk section. In this instance, we're measuring for a 4 foot main walk section. After locating the last bolt hole and determining where the metal frame for the main walk will end, measure and mark an inch and a half to show where the rub rail from the main walk will meet. To illustrate, we're showing the main walk being set in place against the dock frame. You can see where the rub rail from the main walk will be placed. Next comes measuring and cutting of the rub rail. Square off one end board and then align the squared end on the line marked earlier on the dock frame. With the board positioned on that mark, use a straight edge and mark the other end of the board on the mark near the beginning of the next column location on the dock frame. Then cut the board on that mark. The rub rail could now be attached or you could measure the rest of the rails prior to attaching them. When attached, the rub rail should be an inch and a half higher than the surface of the finger or dock section. Line up the ends to the marked lines. Use a clamp or other tool to hold the rub rail in place. Be certain to check with a tape measure to ensure the one and a half inch height above the surface of the dock frame. All holes should be placed approximately three fingers down from the top of the rub rail. Place the first hole approximately four to six inches from the end of the rub rail. Drill the holes using a 930 seconds drill bit. Screw in with 5 16 by 2 and a half inch Torx flathead self-tapping screws. Drill holes in the frame every two feet. You can use the truss rods of the frame which are placed at two foot intervals as a guide. The screw head should be flush or slightly below the surface of the rub rail. Continue measuring, marking, cutting, and attaching the rub rails around the column markings on the dock frame. Check the back side of the rub rail to ensure it contacts the outside edge of the dock frame along the entire length of the rub rail. Repeat this procedure to attach the rub rail adjacent to the main walk section. Continue checking the inch and a half measurement, adjusting the C-clamps as necessary. Here you see how the rub rails fit together when the main walk is attached to the finger sections. This is why referring to the print and proper measurement is so important. Now, measure and cut the deck planks. First, measure the dock width. This dock is 4 feet wide, so place a mark on the plank just a sixteenth of an inch under 4 feet and cut. This is how to make the deck plank. Insert the cut planks into the dock section and gently tap down into place. To mark a line for placement of the screws, measure one and an eighth inch from the edges and mark as shown, as well as two feet to the center. Chalk a line at these locations as shown. We'll place two screws on the end, one in the center, and two on the other end. Follow the chalk lines to attach the deck planks. Drill 930 seconds pilot holes and screw in the decking with 5 16 by 2 and a half inch Torx flathead tap screws. These should be countersunk about a sixteenth of an inch below the surface of the decking. When attaching the center of the decking, be certain to place the pilot hole and screw as close to the middle of the board as possible. These sections are now ready to take on site.